you're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, and Gene with a sore throat, and Chris with a broken tooth, we're presenting an exciting show for you this week, but everything has to go uphill from there. Seriously speaking, on last week's show, of course, we featured Matthew Williams, of the Crop Circle artist, real fascinating guy. And then we got a letter from someone who said that the fact that he had been involved in UFOs and all that stuff should not have been sufficient cause for him to lose his job. I don't know anything about the civil service policies in the UK. But you know, I wondered what kind of audience a crop circle show would get. And I have to think, other than an early episode we did with He Who Shall Not Be Named, who was a follower of the one-armed man, Crop Circles has gotten more of a reaction. Chris, why is that? Well, that's a good question. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at the, uh, the amount of repartee that's going on at forum.theparacast.com. We're piling up the thread postings uh, pretty quickly here. Uh, my inbox and my, my email program is just page after page after page of Matthew Williams Circle Maker <laughs> as the header. I, I think a lot of it, Gene, is that there are a lot of people that really are impressed by the the wonderful sort of sublime nature of crop circles. And and there are people that really don't want to hear that these are made by people. And uh, to have somebody come on who can demonstrate, at least uh, partially to my satisfaction, that uh, a majority of these formations, uh, the more complicated, more beautiful ones, for instance, are man-made. This being the case, I think it's generated a lot of back and forth. And I've I've noticed that Matthew himself is now getting involved answering questions directly there. It's great when we have our guests uh, jump into the fray and get involved. And he's being very patient and answering questions uh, very directly, which, uh, you know, I've got to tip my hat to him for that. And if you want to get involved out there, listeners, get online. It's forum.theparacast.com and uh, sign up. Be looking forward to hearing your particular point of view on the great guests and and, uh, interesting shows that we have here at the Paracast. I'll tell you, the crop circle thing is really fascinating in as much as, except for occasional forays into that realm, over the years following UFOs and such, I never paid that much attention to crop circles. Obviously, there's a lot of pent-up interest in the subject. Boy, there is. Well, again, I think that, uh, like anything else, we need to temper our enthusiasm, uh, regardless of which side of the you know argument you want to fall down on. But we need to temper our, our enthusiasm and, and be open-minded enough to look at the data, read the books, get ourselves up to speed. I think uh, some of the repartee that's going on right now is very well informed. It's, it's again, very controversial, just like uh, everything else in the paranormal. But this particular uh, subject, I think, has really brought out quite a bit of interest here at the Paracast. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where some of these lines of uh, reasoning and arguments go because it's uh, been getting a little hot in, at times and I think it's cooling off right now. But uh, yeah, emotions are, you know, I think people are emotionally involved in this subject. Uh, and it's it's not really that surprising that the threat is taking off to the degree that it has, I guess. What is good is even though it's gotten hot and heavy, we don't have the personal attacks in the way we see it in other forums. I right. know sometimes it really gets crazy. I know when we had the forum that was set up because Art Bell discontinued his Dark Matter radio show at Sirius XM, satellite radio. A lot of frayed nerves, but, you know, as we've mentioned before, the thing that bothers us most about it was the name issue. Mm-hmm. And I have heard from a reliable source that when Art Bell chose that name, he didn't think of the connection with Don Ecker. But even then, something's got to be done about it. This is just what I'm hearing. We're not here to criticize or attack right. anyone. It'll be interesting saying? to see once he gets back on on the Internet, uh, as you know, I've heard that he's planning on doing, is creating an Internet-based show. It'll be interesting to see if he changes the name. I think it would be much to his advantage to change the name myself. Let's just say that that thought has been communicated 
to his people. You know, everybody who is big in this business, they have people. You know, I don't have people. People want to find me. They know where to, where I am. They want to find Chris. They know where he is. But some people, they have people. Yeah, my people are, do lunch with your people. <laughs> They're having lunch together. You know, they'll do lunch in a restaurant somewhere, a Subway restaurant, because we have a low budget. You know, I just got a discount coupon in the mail for Subway restaurants, so therefore I think of them. But that's where it goes. The other interesting thread we have at forum.thepowercast.com is the wackiest GCN commercials. <laughs> now, I understand, folks, that GCN has to make a buck. And, of course, they sell their services to the advertisers who are willing to pay. And it's really hard to get advertising these days. Let me tell you, having been trying to sell advertising myself, it's not easy. But what we have here in this thread is where people post what they think are the craziest products for sale. Now, actually, if you listen to radio commercials on all networks, the one underlying theme is that you have a problem that will be solved by them. Is the IRS after you? Do you need to cure yourself of some disease or prevent yourself from having some kind of problem where you go to the bathroom too often? There's a medicine for that. <laughs> and the same thing is true with TV. It's not just, well, get this flashy new car. It's great. You know, zero down, sign and drive. Of course, you have to pay for the next six years, and about 3% of those who apply will qualify for sign and drive. But you know the score. The point is here that advertising has to fill a need, and I think with radio, you have a lot of trying to prevent disasters. So, for example, you want to avoid a financial meltdown. Invest in gold and silver. I won't comment on the pluses or minuses because I have no clue. But that's one way. Deal with disasters. If the world comes to an end, get survival seeds so you can plant new crops. Or you get, and we had them as an advertiser once, where they give you this collection of freeze-dried food and canned food. And you stick it in the closet, and in case the world ends or there's a natural disaster or something, you go to the closet and you have the food. You don't have to worry about being safe. It probably lasts for years that way, freeze-dried or, or canned. I think of freeze-dried, though, I think of the astronauts. Right. And you know, somebody once was selling astronaut food and making a living from it. Would you like to eat the same crap the astronauts Oh, yeah, consume? right. I could just say peanut butter and jelly in a tube. Right. Do you want peanut butter and jelly in a tube or a freeze-dried McDonald's hamburger or something? Well, I'll have to pass on that. You really would, huh? No. Actually, it's funny. They sent me a package of this stuff, and they don't advertise anymore on the show, okay? So I'm just speaking. It tasted pretty decent. I felt if, you know, we ever had a natural disaster here in Arizona. Yeah. The only astronaut food I've ever had, but I remember as a kid, seeing the Tang commercials. Tang, the drink of the astronauts. So I had Tang. You know, it was pretty good. I like the, the lemon tang. Too. I never liked tang. It wasn't tangy enough. <clears throat> okay. Speaking of tangy, we have a pretty tangy guest today. Oh, yeah. Richard Dolan, of course, he wrote with Bryce Zabel that book, A.D. After Disclosure, when the government finally reveals the truth about alien contact, kind of a speculative book. He's been doing the UFOs in the National Security State series. He has a new book coming out soon called UFOs for the 21st Century Mind. Well, of course, some listeners think my mind is stuck maybe in the 20th century, or is that the 19th century? So this book would be way ahead of anything I'd understand. I want to learn about that, and we'll have questions from our listeners, of course. Richard Dolan, Richard Dolan, coming up next, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. 
ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. These days, so many suffer from heartburn, stomach ulcers, and acid reflux. And most never realize it is the high acidity within the body that causes their discomfort. While selective diet choices can help, AlkaVision Plasma pH drops can really make a change. A few drops added to water can optimize your body's pH level, ridding you of harmful waste and acid, promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Healthy pH levels make all the difference. High acidity can also cause depression, insomnia, and irritability. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops bring you vital balance that can be truly life-changing. Alkalizing boosts immune response, reduces headaches and cramping, and even helps prevent bone loss. This is simple science that helps your body do what's natural. Order your AlkaVision pH Drops for just $29.95 at AlkaVision.com, A-L-K-A-Vision.com, or call 800-518-7615. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. I know you listeners really sometimes want to know what we talk about between segments of the show, and the thing is we can't tell you. But we do have Richard Dolan rejoining us on the Paracast with Gene and Chris. Richard, welcome back. Thanks, Gene and Chris. Uh, Great to be here with both of you guys. You know, before we get started with your stuff, I was remarking to Chris that one of the most popular subjects in our forums these days is crop circles. Of course, we had Colin Andrews on recently. And last week we had Matthew (laughs) Williams, who's one of the guys who does... Crop circles. crop circles, right? And what's your take on those things? Yeah, I think they're a fascinating uh, phenomenon. And you know, since Colin Andrews made a statement, oh God, about I guess ten years ago or so, that uh, the large majority of crop circles that he looked into, he was convinced were man-made. Uh, he caught a lot of hell for that, 
as I recall. In fact, so much in uh, in Britain that he moved out. He's in the United States now. I think he had enough of the uh, British crop circle culture, if, if I gather it right. No, I think crop circles remain. There are certain interesting things about them that I think are not entirely explainable as man-made creations. That's my own opinion. I had a nice conversation earlier this year with uh, someone I consider to be the top American crop circle researcher, and that's uh, Jeffrey Wilson. Uh, Jeff lives out in, I think he's in Ohio. He's the son, by the way, of uh, Donald Wilson, who's, who's deceased. But people may remember Donald Wilson as the guy who wrote the first book on the moon as a real anomalous thing. Jim Mars took that thesis and kind of ran with it in Alien Agenda. But anyway, Jeff's his son, a very sharp guy. He's probably close to 40 now. And uh, the thing I like about Jeff, he's, he's an engineer by training. I think he has a master's degree. And he's extremely, extremely methodical, very scientific. No BS about this man. So I was chatting with him. And... He also agrees that he says the vast majority of these are, are man-made, but he is convinced that a lot of, that some of them are not. And in fact, he, he maintains that a larger percentage of the American circles are not man-made. And I said, well, what's your, you know, what's your reasoning on this? And his answer is simply that it's, it comes down to anomalies in the um, biology of some of the, the stalks that have been analyzed. And when I press him further, as to, you know, what's behind those anomalous creations, he will not go it to the ET direction. He refuses to do that. He refuses even to speculate privately on that. So I said, well, what are you talking about? Some kind of uh, earth vortex, earth geomagnetism. And, and I think that's sometimes his opinion. But he maintains that there's a mystery to it. I, I certainly respect his, um, his analysis. I watched a couple of his lectures. It just blew my mind. Um, I think it's very easy for us to to go to the route that they're all man-made when you have a few people very publicly, you know, out there and making these claims and no one wants to be taken for a rube. No one, the worst thing in the world for anyone is to be seen as, as being dumb and gullible. So I think there's almost like a lemming effect in the field where, you know, someone puts out a, a supposed answer that's very prosaic and then everyone runs away from that topic saying, oh yeah, okay, well, it, it, that's all explained. And I'm, yeah. I'm not really convinced that that's the case. Um, there, is, uh, there are a number of these that at least remain interesting to me. So I still think that there's a mystery involved there. Yeah, you know, I couldn't agree more, Rich. And I think that there's also a nice kind of a correlation between what, what you just said and, and, and the, the unexplained livestock death phenomenon. Oh, yeah. When Kenneth Rommel came out in, in June of 1980 and claimed that this was all just hogwash, you had the stampede of lemmings. And then three years yeah. later, when Kagan and Summers came out with the book uh, Mute Evidence, uh, again, you had a, a stampeding away from the uh, the mystery of the phenomena. Yeah, everyone said, oh, well, that's definitive, end of story, nothing to see here. Yeah, yeah. And since then, everybody's, you know, anybody that even had a casual interest back then, it's like, oh, they explained that years ago. And it's like, uh, I don't think so. The easiest thing for, well, I don't want to say easy, but one of the most common things you see with very, very skeptical arguments in any of these mysteries we're talking about, whether it's UFOs, circles, mutilations, is, um, look, I mean, we could sit down and, and cherry pick our way through cases that are really explainable, even interesting cases that turn out to be explainable. And then what you find is this inference. Well, if this one's explainable and that one's explainable and this tough one is explainable, then therefore... What are we talking about? They all must be explainable. And, and that's where the, I think the logic fails. Totally agree with that. So there are some, there are some formations, uh, even, you know, going back uh, particularly to like the late 80s, early 90s, where at least some of the ones in, in Britain, uh, you know, where they do spring up, they apparently spring up very rapidly, uh, sprang up very rapidly, a, cu a couple of them in broad daylight. Just enormous, enormous. Um, it boggles my mind where in, in 1990, 91, 92, 93, that um, with the people not having GPS, they um, are going to make a circle that is of the intricacy and, and grandeur. It would be like a, a, a team of Leonardo da Vinci's are running around the fields and no one catches them. You know, they're making these amazing amazing formations they don't get caught really almost ever 
I don't know. That's rather impressive. I just don't see uh, all of these as being man-made. Yeah, I think a lot more work has to be done. And uh, I think some of the circle makers, too, have to bolster uh, and back up their claims that they are you know, responsible for uh, many, if not most, of these formations. So They, they have their argument. I mean, the argument said, well, they don't want to get caught. They don't want to pay fines. What they're doing technically is illegal. And, and so there's that reason for being covert about it. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I just think there's, there's too many. But uh, in Jeff, Jeff Wilson's opinion... His argument, what he said to me, I'm trying to remember exactly, something like he feels 95% of the UK formations are man-made, but about only a third to half, maybe a little more than half might be man-made in America. He says at least one third are not man-made. Wow. Um, and again, I mean, I, I don't have his data to work with, but I, I can tell you the guy's impressive and he's, he's, not, um, he's not someone who I think is prone to, you know, uh, over grand statements. He seems to be pretty methodical about what he does. So I think that there's something there. Well, you know, it might be something we have to explore still further, but do you think, and we have to break in about a minute. So let me ask you a fast question before we move on. Do you think any of it all, any of these crop circles at all has any UFO, solid UFO background? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think some probably do. There, there was that big controversy 20 years ago about this so-called uh, video of, of this object zipping around a, a field, creating a circle. And someone said it was fake. And then more recently, again, this is off the top of my head, but I, I seem to recall an, an, a counter argument more recently saying, right. no, that video is not necessarily fake. But even beyond that, you get a lot of bizarre almost high strangeness associated with the circles, just like you get high strangeness associated with a number of UFO reports. So I certainly would not rule this out. Oh, a lot more to go. And we'll have a lot more on crop circles, but not on this episode. We're going to move on. We've got Richard Dolan. He's done a number of fascinating books, so many fascinating topics to talk about. We also have questions from Paracast listeners at forum.theparacast.com. But with Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First game attack of the rockoids and it was a critically acclaimed success and now there is the coming of the protectors a former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the earth this is gripping science fiction of the classic kind attack of the rockoids and the coming of the protectors find out more at rockoids.com that's rockoids r-o-c-k-o-i-d-s dot com if you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. 
What looks good under your Christmas tree and tastes even better? Big Berkey water filters. Yes, the gift of clean water. A gift that provides a great foundation for achieving good health in the lives of your loved ones. A Big Berkey water filter gives them protection from bacteria, heavy metals, chlorine, fluoride, pesticides and herbicides, VOCs and more. And best of all, a Big Berkey water filter is a gift that lasts for many years with no additional investment. And that saves time and money in filter replacements that other water filters require and are even powerful enough to purify treated, untreated, or even stagnant pond water. As always, all orders over $50 are shipped free, and GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Order online at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com, spelled Big, B-E-R-K-E-Y, WaterFilters.com, or call 877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-B-E-R-K-E-Y. Gift well this Christmas. Give a Big Berkey water filter. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Whey and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Whey, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Whey, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100 degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Whey and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Whey comes in single servings. Just give it a try. For a health and taste sensation you'll love, call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit oneworldway.com. That's oneworld, W-H-E-Y dot com. This is Leslie Kane, and I'm with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, and you are listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris, we have Richard Dolan joining us this week. And it's been a little while since he's been on the Paracast, so I wanted to bring people up to date, especially because we have a lot of new listeners. Some new stations have added the Paracast and don't know about Richard Dolan. He tends to focus, or he has focused in the past, on the historical aspects of UFOs in relationship to the so-called national security state. Richard, what attracted you to go look into that area And how has it become more relevant now that we know the NSA is really snooping on us? Yeah, well, UFOs are one of these topics where once you dive in, you find that it it really is a a reality shatterer in almost any way you look at it, whether it's the science, you know, which in in every way is, is a real challenge for us to understand. But it's always been the politics that has driven me even as a very young person, long before I was interested in UFOs, I've always been interested in politics. And that's really how I got into this field. And it's really, it's, it's still my most engaging focus, although not solely. I got into the UFO field, it's been about 20 years now. And as I've, I've said a number of times in interviews, I basically feel like I fell into UFOs in the early 90s. I was doing dissertation research on uh, Harry Truman and the Cold War, the early, late 40s, early 50s. Uh, nothing with UFOs, but I, I stumbled into the topic. And in fact, one of the real triggers was uh, seeing a copy of Timothy Good's Above Top Secret sitting on a display in a bookstore. And it was the subtitle of that book that has always intrigued me, which was the worldwide UFO cover-up. And I thought, wow, for real? Let's take a look. As many listeners who may be familiar with Tim Good know, it's, it's a fine book. He did his best to put together documentary evidence showing that this is a real thing and that real political, high-level national security people around the world have taken it seriously. I was intrigued, and, and immediately this idea of what I, I've since called cultural schizophrenia so it really hit home with me in the sense that we have two versions of truth, uh, what I often, often call official truth, that is the truth you're supposed to believe, and then unofficial truth, which is the stuff that people actually believe. Uh, I think you find variations of this around the world. It's always symptomatic of some level of political repression uh, when you have these two versions of truth. And I thought, you know, in the official version of truth, UFOs are fairy tale stuff. They don't exist. It's not for serious minds. 
And then what you find when you dig a little bit deeper and then a little deeper is you find actually very brilliant and well plugged in, well connected, high level national security people. Guess what? They have been taking it seriously. So I thought, well, what what's the reason for this disconnect? There's obviously something there. And it's that's been the the main focus that I've had, the main driving interest uh, that's kept me going all these years. And I think it's more relevant now than ever. I, I think it's impossible and or at least very superficial for someone to study UFOs independently of the politics. You can do it. Uh, you can spend your whole life focusing on whether it's abductions or whether it's on uh, analyzing sightings and studying propulsion. But to me, without looking at the politics, we're really missing a huge part of what makes this topic so important. Uh, I, I maintain that the origins of UFO secrecy have played an enormous role in the creation of uh, what we might call a black budget culture here in the United States and now worldwide. Uh, that in other words, it was essential from the 1940s onward for this topic to become absolutely positively below the surface, secret from the public. And that was one of, I think several, but a key creation of the kind of uh, black budget security structure that's now really has taken over what used to be the American Republic. Come, uh, like an alien creature coming out of the corpse of a dead body, and that is the national security state. And uh, much of that has to do with UFO secrecy. All right, so you're <clears throat> positing here possibly a, another government, a secret yeah. government that maybe is not answerable to anyone. Is that well, equivalent sort of to secret. what Donald Rumsfeld was talking about back before 2001, 9-11, about trillions of dollars vanishing? Sort of. Uh, Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld's statement uh, just prior to 9-11, he made a couple of these statements, actually, one in July before Congress and then one on September 10th, uh, more publicly, about $2.6 and then $2.3 trillion that was uh, unaccounted for, unaccountable, I think unaccounted for transactions, I think he said. You know, we have to remember when he made that statement, this is in 01, the Bush administration was brand new. So for Rumsfeld, basically that was an implicit criticism of the Clinton administration, essentially saying he'd inherited this mess in the Pentagon. But of course, this has been, this is standard business before and since Rumsfeld's time, where what we have is um, lots and lots and lots of money flowing through federal, state, local channels that who knows where some of this stuff goes. And then internationally, there's a big black hole in the center of our financial system, lots of missing money. Oh, by the way, just as an addendum to that statement, in the aftermath of that, and then after 9-11, uh, there was a, a branch in the US government that was uh, supposedly charged with analyzing that money. Where did it go? Uh, the guy in charge of it, I think was named Doug, Dov Zakheim. And um, he's one of the top neocon players. And you know these people never seem to go away. and and supposedly what he said, you can find this, I think, on his wiki page, that they got, they, they resolved the transactions, if you want to believe that, and got the number eventually down to zero. And if you want to believe that, I could try to sell you some real estate in various places around the world. <laughs> and, uh, I understand that bridge in Brooklyn is for sale at a special price. Okay, so the key is here is, if they resolve the transactions, what was the end result? Well, they say they did. I mean, I guarantee you some top level general said $3 want trillion. That, dollars. Boy, I want that number down to zero. Footwork. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the DOD particularly, it is literally impossible to audit the United States Defense Department. You, God could not audit the DOD. You would, it would fail. Um, it's, and it's by design. You, you just can't. The, the transactions are too opaque. They're very, vastly uh, beyond what any accountant could handle. And so, yeah, what I would say is that there's been a government that's grown out of the government. Um, and one thing that we have to do in our, our political kind of education is to get a handle of exactly what kind of system we have. We all grow up with this idea that America is a democratic type of republic. We elect our officials. We don't like them. We throw the bums out and all of that. But that's really not our system. That's not what we have. And this is relevant for the UFO phenomenon, because think about it. Go back through UFO history, go back to the 1950s and 60s, when uh, the leading civilian organization for UFOs, which is called NICAP, back in those days, th what was their big issue? They tried to get open congressional hearings on UFOs. 
with, on the assumption that logical assumption, really, that Congress is the the uh, appropriate voice of the American people, and that it's through Congress that we want to get forward motion and and resolve any kind of secrecy issues, and. And of course, that that never they never succeeded in that. Every well, time. there was a hearings. I think Gerald Ford was partly yeah. responsible for the hearings that resulted in the Condon Committee, which ended up being essentially a whitewash, and that kind of killed NICAP. Yeah. Well, there was an oh, their hearing in 1966 for one day called the O'Brien hearings. Um, that was pretty inconsequential. Uh, and then you had uh, hearings in 1968, and then you had the the so-called Condon Committee report. Um, yeah, these were all whitewashes uh, by and large. But uh, what what's happened is that even during that time and certainly since that time, we've developed a different kind of a, uh, a different kind of a system. And it's hard to put your finger on it because it's international. It's not it's not really the old fashioned American Republic. I mean, we're in a completely integrated world. And when we talk about the president, I think people implicitly realize that presidents aren't elected so much as selected. And so who's doing the selecting? And, you know, we're getting into uh, financial entities that are global. They're not national. And look, if you've got billions and billions and even trillions of dollars to play, play with, you're not going to let something as important as the U.S. government go to some random vote of the people. You're going to control that entity. You're going to control its military. You'd be an idiot. Well, and we have to think what kind of power does a president even have anymore. Richard Dolan joins Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at webtv.net. That's Mr. UFO at webtv.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Are you frustrated with your current job? Not making the type of money that you know you are worth? Is it time for a change? Maybe it's time you considered starting your own home-based business. Autopilot Marketing has helped thousands of people just like you get started working from home. Whether it's an extra $250 to $500 per month part-time or a six-figure full-time income, anything is possible. You don't need any special skills or experience. Anyone can succeed with Autopilot Marketing. Take our free video tour and find out if this opportunity is right for you. Go to Income16.com now. That's Income, the number 16.com. Take our free video tour today and start earning money as early as next week. Go to Income16.com. That's Income, the number 16.com. In the U.S., one in every 50 homes will have a break-in this year. Burglars call it smash and grab. Police call it robbery. We call it avoidable. We are Fake TV, a simple electronic device that can fool even professional burglars. Fake TV easily plugs into any outlet and simulates the changing colors of a television. To a burglar, it looks like someone must be home watching TV, so they'll likely move on to an easier target. 
At only $29.95, Fake TV costs less than a month of most alarm monitoring plans and comes with free shipping. Order your Fake TV by calling 877-5-FAKE-TV or go to faketv.com. That's 877-532-5388 or faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris, we're talking about the national security state with Richard Dolan. So, Richard, so the corporation sponsored the president. We have the Citizens United decision by the Supreme Court that opens up the spigots for campaign money from anyone, from any organization, billionaires putting money in there. Does the president even have any power anymore to do anything? President is a sales rep. That's really what the U.S. president is. He's got to sell you two things. They're both bitter pills, by the way. First bitter pill is he's got to sell you globalization and all of its sordid glory. That's He's got to push that. And then the other thing he's got to sell is whatever new war comes down the pike. And that's got to be sold. And uh, if he does that, he's doing his job. He, you know, Beyond that, he's got to kiss the babies. He's got to shake the hands of the people. He's got to put himself out there. He's the face and voice of our rulers. How else do you want to put it? He's, that's what his job is. <laughs> I also have that's to wonder then, if it. all the political controversies, Democrats, Republicans, <clears throat> it's just theater, like the worldwide wrestling federation or whatever. You have the hero and the villain. You said it week. exactly right. There's a, there's a YouTube video of Jesse Ventura and uh, I can't remember the name of it, but he's hanging out with Willie Nelson. This is like a private sort of chilling video. You know, Jesse's chilling with, with Willie. And someone had their, their little phone video out and they're recording Jesse. He's just doing his, his thing. He's talking about the world. He's doing his rant. And he said something absolutely spot on. He said, politics is exactly the same as championship wrestling. Because, you know, he was a wrestler. And he said, you know, we would get on TV and we'd get in each other's face like, you're going down. You're going into a world of hurt. I'm going to kill you. And he said, in reality, we were each other's buddies. We'd go to each other's barbecues. We were the best men at each other's weddings and godfathers of each other's children. It was all a big game. And he said, this is exactly what politics is. It's the same thing. Look at um, Henry Kissinger and Zbigniew Brzezinski. All right. One for years and years and generations and centuries was the manager of Republican Party national security. And the other is the manager of Democrat policy for national security. And who are they? Both the same guy. They're both protégés of David Rockefeller. They're both in the exact same little club. There's not one iota of difference in their national security direction. And yet each really has been the doyen, the godfather of each of those parties. Now they're both very old and uh, obviously successors will take over, but it's the same thing. You know, when you get down to the major issues, there are no, there really are no significant differences. And the reason this is important, by the way, for the UFO phenomenon, this is why I wanted to bring this up, is because when you When you're getting into understanding UFO secrecy, when you're trying to right the wrong, this great disconnect of this most incredible mystery that's affecting millions of people who deal with it silently, who deal with it in an atomized way without public engagement, really, you think, well, our government is the proper tool for us to correct this, right? But that only works 
if you go on the, the predicate that our government is one that is responsive to people, it's a democratic government. What if you're in a fascist society and you've got this phenomenon? How do you deal with it then? I don't know how we really want to define fascism today as opposed to the 1930s, but what, whatever we have developed today in the United States, it's not freedom. It's not democracy. It's something very, very different. So it does matter what your political system is when you're dealing with this phenomenon, if you're going to try to make forward change and try to right that wrong of secrecy. Well, you also have to wonder here if you do have this other government, the secret government managing the UFO secret, whatever it may be, what are they doing in public to misdirect us? Maybe a lot of what we see in terms of UFOs, and that could include abductions, is misdirection, mind control, etc. Absolutely. What's not hidden is uh, hidden in plain sight through obfuscation, through uh, just outright denials and lies, and then through distraction, distraction and spin. All of these are really key. I mean, we live in a society where, think about this, I, for myself and also for you guys, I study this topic every single day. I think about the UFO phenomenon every single day. And I have a very good education to do it. I'm lucky. Uh, I'm kind of fanatically dedicated and determined. So I'm, I mean, as, as far as anyone that I know personally, I'm, I'm one of the, I'm in one of the best positions to try to do my best to figure this out and make some progress. And it's hard for me. It's very hard for me. Uh, I'm sure it's hard for you guys. So think about for 99 plus percent of the rest of the people who don't really have all that education, who don't have the desire, who don't really want to, to fight the machine the way I do, who, um, they just, they want to live their lives. They got their jobs. They got their family. They got their kids. They got, and then they come home from work and they put some TV on and they veg out a little bit and they have a beer. There's no opportunity realistically for most of these people ever, ever to get past the fog of disinformation and distraction so that they can actually focus on this incredible topic. I think it's the most fascinating mystery of our time. How are they going to do it? They th- basically the answer is they won't do it. Yeah. So you've impressive. got a very yeah you got a very small number of people who have the resources and the time and the desire to do this. And what happens is a lot of people who get very heavily involved, maybe they only have average resources, so their job goes by the wayside, and they almost can literally starve to death. I mean, there are some famous people in the UFO field who died in poverty, and I think yeah, Richard John, Hall John is one Keel. of them. Uh, Richard Hall, John Keel. Right. Uh, I myself, listen, I'll, I'll just tell you, I have struggled for uh, the last 15 plus years. I've made a conscious sacrifice. I could have gone off and made good money and doing some kind of corporate job, sell myself to Xerox or whatever. I actually thought about this 20 years ago at the beginning of my, um, my transformation out of academia. I, I thought, well, because I'd grown up thinking, well, I'm going to be a professor. I'll teach history at some nice university. And then I decided, no, it's not going to happen. And, and it was a hard moment in my life, I'll tell you. And for about five minutes, I thought, do I want to go to Xerox? Xerox is big in Rochester here where I live. And then the thought was, I'd rather slit my wrists and jump off of the building. (laughs) I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I really, I literally am incapable of that kind of a life. So what I did is I've thrown myself into this and struggled. I won't lie to you. It's, it's very hard. I'm trying to figure out a way now to make at least enough of a living so that I can do this full time and devote myself to it. And I, I got, I got a couple of kids to support. I've got, I have a life here and it's not easy, but I am throwing my life onto the altar of, of this topic. And that's just how it is. All right. Boy, so if we penetrate the government secrecy, the secret government, what do you think sits there? Is it just UFOs or spaceships? They know the secret, they're exploiting it, whatever. I think that there are uh, intelligences I, I've taken to calling them others. Uh, are they extraterrestrial? I think that I see no reason why they cannot be extraterrestrial. I think that there's very good reason to consider that quite seriously, even now. And that I think ET hypothesis sometimes goes out of favor, but not with me. I think that there's absolutely a reason why they can be from another planet. Um, there may be more interesting and scientifically out there solutions to this. But look, I think when you go through the long history of leaks and particularly of alleged, I think, probable crash retrievals, I happen to think that some of these are legit, then that tells me 
that someone has got some hardware that did not originate from this civilization. Let uh, me interrupt, not- Richard. Why not assume that just as possible, those are test aircraft of some sort? Well, if they're test aircraft, then they're not simply decades, but generations and maybe centuries or more beyond what we've had, at least judging by when you go through all of what I think is the compelling eyewitness testimony of people who have been associated with retrievals, you come again and again and again to stories of non-human bodies that have been associated with those retrievals. So for my money, I think that that's, that's a key part of this. And the only other thing that I will just say is on a very quiet, private basis, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times, and it's so frustrating to me that I, I can't mention every single name that I've talked with, but one of them is Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut, and I've spoken with Edgar Mitchell privately about this, and he, has, he used to speak publicly about this, he doesn't anymore, about his conversations, he told me, with two ultra-high-level ultra high level national security people. And look, when you're a moonwalking astronaut, who's not going to want to be your buddy. So he can basically talk to pretty much anyone who told him explicitly, he said, of deeply secret clandestine compartmented programs that are charged with holding and studying alien technology and bodies. And that doesn't mean simply because Edgar Mitchell says it, that it's gospel, but look, he was in his right mind. He wasn't, he hadn't lost it. Uh, I believe him. I think it's true. And I've, I've had similar conversations with a, a handful of other well-placed individuals that have given me reason to think this is true. So if you've got exotic technology not from here, if you've got bodies that are clearly not human, then um, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with something that's not us, that's from some other place or some other dimension or whatever. We're continuing this week on the show with Richard Dolan joining Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. G-C-N. Great talk radio starts here. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Wise up, load up at freestriguy.com. Now is the time to get the freeze-dried meats, fruits, and vegetables you want from Wise on sale at freestriguy.com. This delicious, nutritious food is perfect for your emergency preparedness or outdoor recreational needs. It's the food with a 25-year shelf life you see exclusively featured on the popular Doomsday Preppers TV show. It's the same quality line of food the lovely Marie Osmond has been touting all across America. It's the wise investment in your family's future that personal finance expert and radio host Dave Ramsey has been talking about. And it's on sale now through Cyber Monday, December 2nd at freezedryguy.com. So wise up, shop online now or call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD. Make the wise food choice. It's easy to prepare, easy to enjoy, and easy to buy on sale now at freezedryguy.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris on the Paracast, we're talking about UFOs and the national security state. What's really going on behind the scenes? Is there a secret government? Is the president just a well-placed puppet? 
are all the political disputes, Republicans, Democrats, the middle, the extremes, just theater? Chris, you had a question of Richard Dolan? Uh, you know, I did. And, and this goes back to, uh, you know, the previous segment when we were discussing Edgar Mitchell and him confiding in you. And one story that I heard, and, and it just popped back into my mind here listening to you, was something about a, a, a big glass sphere that he saw on the moon. And, and all references to that have been excised. Uh, do you know if they brought that back or has he ever mentioned that to you? He never spoke to me about that. No, I don't really know what to say about that. Um, so, so you're familiar with the? Uh, I've heard. I, I don't know the wasn't source there some of NASA. Them. I think there was some NASA radio chatter or something that 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 mentioned it when they were there, when when they first arrived, if I remember correctly, and and then all references uh, to this uh, obvious, obviously manufactured object, uh, if it's real, all references have been excised. I did come across this in passing. I really, I feel like I should dive into that a little more um, in some detail and find the exact source of it. It's, it's intriguing. I will add, I think that there are some stories that I, I tend to credit about the moon, about anomalies on the moon. I'll tell you one that just came to me personally. I've met, again, this is something I mentioned once or twice before. Uh, this is a conversation I had a number of years ago with Russell Targ, who uh, many will know is one of the, the top chief scientists involved in remote viewing uh, for Stanford Research Institute back in the 70s and 80s. So yeah, he's been a talk, guest on the show. Yeah, so here's one thing Russell Talk told me. Uh, I don't know if he's mentioned this publicly. I've mentioned it publicly a few times. He, I had a long conversation with him on one occasion. And he said to me, Richard, back, I think he said in the early mid 80s, he said, I was charged for a while to train remote viewers at Fort Meade, Maryland whose job was to remote view the far side of the moon. And then there was a long pause, and I very innocently put out, well, why, why would they do that, Russell? <laughs> he said, why do you think? And there was another pause, and I said, oh, I don't know, were they looking for E.T.? And he said, yes, they were looking for E.T. And that's exactly what he said to me. And I said, uh, I asked him, well, did they find E.T.? And he said, well, I, I don't know. That wasn't part of my job. So whether he knew or not, I, I don't know. But I mean, think about this. So you've got, you have a guy training remote viewers out of Fort Meade to look for ET on the backside of the moon. They're not going to look for ET on the far side of the moon if they don't have some reason to think that there's something there. Uh, there's another story. This was actually in Tim Good's Above Top Secret. And, and this is something I spoke to Tim about personally. And this is a story about Neil Armstrong. A lot of people have heard this. Uh, Tim Good had a very close friend, uh, a person who I think has since deceased, a very close friend of Timothy's, who he trusted implicitly, he said. And this woman was at a gathering, like a kind of a function where Neil Armstrong was present. I mean, and think about Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon and becomes a hermit for the rest of his life. Most famous man in the world when he does what he does. And then he comes back and goodbye, Neil Armstrong. It's like, you know, well, well not level. quite. The first thing he did was he went down to South America and went spelunking, looking for a Taos gold, I think. <laughs> oh, well, OK. And after that, nothing. After that, yeah, he disappeared. Goes away. But she was at a function where he was and and eavesdropped. So she's standing like 10 feet away, apparently. And according to what she told Tim Good, and he wrote about this in his in Above Top Secret, she hears this pr doctor or professor talking with Neil Armstrong. And, and the guy says, so. What really happened on the moon? <laughs> you know, this is the kind of question everyone would love to be a fly on the wall for. And um, according to what she said, she heard Neil Armstrong talking about these other craft that were there. He used the word menacing and essentially said to this guy, look, they were there and we, we have no way of dealing with them, essentially, is what she heard him say. Is it true? Well, you know. You can take it for what it's worth. Tim Good believed her, and he believed her enough that he put it in his book. This is the problem with our field. We're dealing with more than simply a scientific matter. I, I would that it were that simple. We're dealing with a matter where a door has been slammed in our face, where we know that there's this great mystery, and we're trying to get it data that should be available for a public to be able to study and analyze, and it is not available. It has been unavailable since the beginning. And that's, that's a handicap, and that's unfortunate, and it's easy for 
uh, skeptics and people who oppose us to say, well, you know, you're, you're putting out information that's not, it's not testable, it's not provable, it's therefore not scientific. Yeah, that's true, but that doesn't change the situation. It doesn't change the fact that we are being stopped in our tracks. It doesn't change the situation that we're dealing with a kind of a government that is not open, where information does not just flow freely the way that we would like to believe it does. So we have to scurry around and, and pick up these stories where we can. And some of them are, are spurious and some are not spurious. And it just makes the whole damn thing difficult. It's like putting together a, a big jigsaw puzzle of 5,000 pieces. Half the pieces have been taken out. Fake pieces have been put in and you got people yelling over your shoulder saying you're doing it wrong while you're trying to put it together. That's what we do. Right. It's monochromatic. It's just one color. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, the hardest thing here is how do you do anything about it? If you have an entrenched government system that runs everything behind the scenes and everything you see in public is just for show. If the well, real stuff is going on behind the scenes, it would almost require a revolution to stop it, wouldn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. That's my conclusion. I've felt this way for years. And I think that something like that is happening. We're in the most dramatically transformative period uh, that anyone can conceive of uh, throughout any of human history. And that's saying a lot. We're developing a global system on the one hand that is basically foreshadowing a global police state. But on the other hand, there are tools that ordinary people have gotten that we could not dream of even 20 years ago. So we have got this uh, global communication system in place, but we more than that, we're developing ways of ferreting out information that really were not feasible, like Edward Snowden and like WikiLeaks. In other words, the ability and Chelsea Manning and all of these people who are pulling data, digital data out of classified um, repositories where it's illegal for them to do so, but they don't care. That's not stopping them. And that's part of our world now. So I think what, what's happening is that increasingly we're going to see more of this. We're going to see more examples of basically a kind of a worldwide nonviolent guerrilla movement that is fighting on behalf of truth and even justice, let us say. And it's, it's a, it's a battle. It's a war. And I don't think we're going to be in the same place in 20 years where we are now. We're going to have new technologies, new capabilities. There will be new capabilities on the other side of the fence too. But I think we're in a very uh, situation of flux, one that's inherently unstable. And I would never rule out that this is hopeless. I, I mean, I would, never, I would never say this is hopeless. I would never rule out that we have a real chance for a breakthrough. We haven't oh. had it yet, but we may. All right. If we have some outside force responsible for UFOs, say they are aliens, say they are landing here, say we have guilty knowledge of them inside the dark corners of governments. Sure. Okay. Are we talking to them or is there the danger, always danger, that they will decide to take matters into their own hands, stage a mass landing, and then it's all over? Yeah, I mean, both of those, why would they, uh, either of those be impossible? Let's look at the first one where they have communication with uh, members of the human elite now. Look, if, if I, I've wondered about this many times. So if like I were an alien or if we were aliens and we came to Earth, so maybe we wouldn't be able just to walk around on the planet's surface and mingle. That probably wouldn't go over very well. After all, you get the whole pitchfork and torch phenomenon, you know, people saying, let's kill the aliens. So we might not want to deal with that. That'd be a big hassle. But we would be interested in human society. We would be very interested in human society. Look, humans are, are transforming themselves so dramatically in this last century. Look where we've come from. Look where we are going. I'll sure. tell you where we're going, but first we've got to do this break. Richard Dolan joins Gene and Chris with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I'd already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. 
First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's The Coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Do you know how much the dollar has lost in its value against other currencies in the last 90 days? Ever think about how inflation will change your life, your savings, your retirement plans? Remember inflation in Zimbabwe, Argentina, the Weimar Republic? Put another way, who cares if your investments go up 10%, but you lose 40% of your purchasing power? Gold is the only monetary asset as no one else's liability. Gold still buys the same amount of stuff it always did. Gold does not require trust in a third party. You can possess it in your hand. You can take it with you. Gold is real money. Gold is honest money. My name is Daniel Larson from Midas Resources. To find out how you can protect your savings and roll over your IRA funds into precious metals accounts, please call me at 800-686-2237, extension 134. That's 800-686-2237, extension 134. 800-686-2237, extension 134. Shop in your underwear. Get prepared in your pajamas. Get food for camping from the comfort of your own bed. Whatever you do, get in on Freeze Dry Guy's Bean Blowout Sale. There's no better bargain on beans. Dehydrated small red chili beans, pinto beans, and baby lima beans. With a super long shelf life, these healthy beans are a big time score for emergency preparedness or outdoor activities. Bean Blowout Cases of six number 10 cans for just 97 bucks. Only $97 plus free shipping. No need to gas up and go. Shop online now at freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD. This super sale runs now all the way through Cyber Monday, December 2nd, while supplies last. Freeze Dry Guys, beans, beans, they're good for your heart. The more you buy now, the more you feel smart. On sale only at freezedryguy.com. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit Herbalhealer.com and click the winner specials button to save on our natural cold and flu fighting products herbalhealer.com healing the world with nature one person at a time since 1988 we'd like to hear from you if you have a comment or question about the paracast send it to news at the paracast.com that's news at the paracast.com and don't forget to visit our famous paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com on the Paracast with Gene and Chris, Richard Dolan joins us. Among his books, two volumes of UFOs in the National Security State. And before we go on, there's a volume three coming somewhere. What's well, happening with it? I'll tell you what I've got going on. So I have two volumes of history, UFOs in the National Security State. One is 500 pages. One is 600 pages. Those two volumes go from the early 1940s to the early 90s. It covers about 50 years. There will absolutely be a third volume, which will take that story to the present day. Uh, Before that's out, I've had one interruption, one project after another that just seems to conspire to get me on something else. So project number one was when I wrote AD After Disclosure with Bryce Zabel, who has been a guest on this show. I have uh, very, very, very good feelings about having done that book. That was a great adventure for me to write that. That's a speculation about the future. And we can talk about that. But then uh, there's been another project that I'm just wrapping up now, which I'm very excited about. And this is um, 
a book I've called UFOs for the 21st Century Mind. It's been in the works for two years. I have thrown so much of myself into this book and really think of it as a fresh introduction to the entire field. I think this, this topic of ours has needed a comprehensive, true, full introduction from a contemporary point of view, a 21st century point of view, to all, or at least as much of the mysteries of this topic as a person could write about. And that's what I've done. I'm um, ready to put it out. So this would be like a book that's not just for beginners. It's a sophisticated introduction. That's how I look at it. So it's something that you can give to your skeptical cousin who says, ah, what's up with UFOs? A lot of nonsense. You say, no, here's a great book to get you up to speed. Um, but it's also a book, I think, for experienced researchers as well, because I, I think that there are fresh perspectives in this book on every single page. At least I, I tried for that. And it's an engaging read. And my attitude is if, if you're bored reading it, then you're a boring person. There's really no other way to get around it. I think it's a, it's a good read. And I'm excited about getting this book out. And that's, I, I wanted it to be a short book. And it's clocking in at probably in the upper 300, close to 400 pages. But it's, it's an engaging read. So that'll be out. Oh, God, I'm just trying to get this out as, as quickly as I can. So these are the things that have been engaging me. Um, I'm glad that I've done this project because it's really uh, encouraged me to take a broader look at all of this topic, whether it's the history from ancient to today. And I've, I have several chapters dealing with the history. So there's a little bit of a teaser for volume three that's in this book, but also the, the politics and what I would call the deep politics, uh, a, some, a, something of a sophisticated analysis of the politics of the cover-up, at least that's what I've tried to do there in a few chapters. But then there's chapters dealing with just like philosophy of, of what is a UFO? How do we really understand what UFOs are in an age of uh, unmanned drones, in an age of, of off-the-charts technology that our society is getting that's confusing us about what UFOs are and what aren't? That's a real issue. And then there's a chapter dealing with, several chapters dealing with who these other beings might be, the whole idea of contact. What is contact? Chapters dealing with science. I mean, whether it's dealing with propulsion to space time to consciousness itself are all of these are issues that are very, very important to me and much more. So it's, it's a, a book about UFOs that really, I think, deals with this topic in a way that hopefully will be pr productive moving forward into the century. Uh, so that's what I'm working on. The third volume of history is something that I'll be writing probably all through 2014. I want to get that book done too. So wow. it's, it's I'm just, I'm working, working, working. Plus the other thing that I'm doing, this has been a very big part of my year and it's going to be a very big part of next year is that I've really been expanding my own publishing company, which I've reno, renamed to Richard Dolan Press. It's no longer Keyhole Publishing. And I've been publishing books by some really stellar authors this year and going into next year also. I'm very, very glad to be doing this. It's all as a way for me to find a, a method of a contributing to this field, helping others contribute to the field and finding a way so that I can del delve into this topic full time and not have to distract myself with a day job. So the publishing company <clears throat> becomes your day job. Yes, exactly. The publishing company and this topic, all of it, all of it's rolled into one. Hmm. I might have to send you some book proposals. <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> I, I get them frequently now i get them frequently okay. and i've got a bunch of books that i'm working on right now for other authors uh one of which i i was just uh fascinated because an article came out that's on exactly this topic which has to do with russian slash soviet usos um just turns out supposedly i just read the article i haven't seen uh, a, a detailed source on this but i'm told that the russian navy has navy has declassified a number of their reports on submerged, uh, unknown submersible objects, USOs. And it so happens that I'm publishing a book in the next few months by Paul Stonehill and Philip Mantle. They've worked together in the past. Oh, boy. On that's Russian that's slash... A, that's a, a good pairing. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, on Russian USOs. And a lot of the themes that I, I read about in this new press release are exactly what they're dealing with in detail. It's a fascinating book. So, I mean, I, I feel like one of the luckiest people I know. I'm, I'm finding a way to, to do this full time, engaging myself in this topic, dealing with fascinating authors who have just incredible things to say. It adds to my knowledge and hopefully 
I'm able to contribute to their success and, and get their information out there. That sounds so great. That's, that, that's uh, what I do. These, that's my life these days. Yeah, well, that's good. Moving forward and, and uh, being part of the solution as opposed to being a log jam. Uh, that's one of the problems. People get entrenched in this field into a particular conclusion or set of beliefs. And it sounds like you're allowing yourself to be open to all possibilities, yet at the same time, really drilling down on the uh, on the areas that you feel are most, uh, you know, could be potentially yeah. most fru- fruitful. Well, like I, I love I love what I do. I'm 51 years old now. And uh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not the, a young kid in the field anymore. I'm, I'm not so old that I have no energy left. I feel like I'm at the perfect period in my life to be doing all of this. And, and one of the important things is to remind myself not to, to turn my brain into concrete and not to, um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? To have oh, like yeah. a, a, a conclusion for all time and say, this is what it is. Yeah. The, the farther I go down this path, the more I realize this is, a topic that we're really, we're, we're bumping into the limits of our knowledge here. And maybe, maybe the limits of our capacity as sometimes to understand this mystery. It could very well be that what we're dealing with is an intelligence that is just so far different and beyond where we are. We may never truly grasp all of this topic, but look, what else do you want to do with your life? You know, you can sit around and uh, watch American Idol, or you can you can dive into something that's really engaging. That it keeps you youthful. That keeps you thinking about yeah. the world in interesting ways. I'd rather do that. Mental gymnastics. Uh, I, I always loved the Terrence McKenna observation that whatever this is that uh, we're seeing that we are thinking is uh, is ET or off planet is actually something so far beyond that that it's masquerading itself as ET so that we can even deal with it. Maybe. It, that's, that's a really brilliant thought. And it's uh, this is something that Jacques Vallée, I think, uh, put out there years before as well. And I think there's a lot to the idea. John Keel also put out ideas of that nature when he talked of ultra-terrestrials. Sure. We've got Richard Dolan joining us this week with Gene and Chris. You're <laughs> in The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com an e-cig revolution is sweeping across the country. But is yours American-made? Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is. Manufactured in Arkansas with 100% USA-sourced ingredients. And when you buy American, you support local jobs. Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is top quality at an affordable price. The very principle that once drove the American economy. Get great taste with no ash, tar, or smoke. You'll be wondering why you didn't make the change to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig a long time ago. LaSig.com has everything you need for beginners to the advanced vaping enthusiast with a wide variety of hardware and also imported e-liquid flavors as well. Plus, LaSig smokes the competition with fast, free, same-day shipping, real people customer service, and a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Support our country and become a vapriate at LaSig.com or call 870-525-1440, 870-525-1440. LaSig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker. To thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds. 
that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. A healthy digestive system supports a healthy immune system. system. And a healthy immune system protects you against infections and disease. Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse, available at Terragonics.com, is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic and is gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM1 contains three groups of beneficial microbes and enzymes to cleanse and remove toxins, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, and aids in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is dairy, wheat, and soy free, is non-GMO, has all natural certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is never freeze-dried. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, Terraganics.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM1, the raw probiotic. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? <laughs> We're thinking here, ladies and gentlemen, of having the best of the Paracast stingers. So we feature Richard Dolan, Bryce Zabel, Nick Redfern, of course, Chris O'Brien, and others who have given it a try over the years. Brad Steiger did a pretty good job a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> In his best Bela Lugosi imitation. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I've never spoken to him. You've I've never, never talked a, to Brad Steiger? I've corresponded with him. I've corresponded with him. I had a couple of research questions, I recall, right. on one occasion. But, uh, no, I've never met the man. Yeah, I, I, I met him years and years ago. And, have you know, of course, when I was a kid, I remember reading his books uh, in grade school. Man, he's, he's been, been at it quite a long time. Yeah. I've known him for 100 years, you know, so. Cool. But I haven't met him that often. I've talked to him on the phone occasionally. He was the first, one of the first guests we had on the Paracast in 2006. And he helped us name the show, by the way. Oh, wow. We were going to call it, seriously, folks, this is a real story. We were going to call it Paracast World. And Brad said, why not the Paracast? And I said, why not? I thought you were going to call it Gene Steinberg's Wacky UFO Merry-Go-Round. That's what I thought your first name was. Well, you know, I don't put my name in the products that I do. Maybe (laughs) I should, but I don't. Maybe it's because, (laughs) you know, I want to be more respectful for the people who work with me. Richard Dolan. Are we on the air now or I don't even know? Uh, Well, you know, sometimes we don't know either, but actually we are. (laughs) And we need to kind of focus on something or other. But I think one of the big questions we get when we talk about the government having access to secret alien technology, that if they get a hold of these things, number one is, how do they reverse engineer anything? I mean, take today's iPhone 5S with the fingerprint sensor and everything. Take it back 100 years. Hand it to somebody and say, figure it out. Right. It would, it, would be, it would be impossible. Give, get everyone a cell phone to the greatest genius of the 19th century, and they would fail utterly at even you know, the beginnings of understanding how to do it. But what I think happens with reverse engineering, this is my theory. You know, let's say you give, you give someone a cell phone 100 years ago. So you know, do, they, they can't reproduce it, obviously. But maybe they know that it is a phone. Maybe they know Maybe some information came to them that telling them, this is a device that you can speak, that you can use to speak to other people wirelessly. You know, so they may know some parameters. And really one of the key things about enabling scientific progress, it seems to me, is a simple thing. It's knowing that such and such a thing is even possible. If you know something's possible, then you know that's a direction we're going to go. So what I, what I would, suggest is that when you get um, exotic technology that's been retrieved, 
No, you can't reproduce it. It's too far beyond. And in fact, there, again, we have leaks exactly saying that precise thing. But what we end up doing is we try our own methods at attempting to go in that direction. And those themselves can lead to breakthroughs. If but you we know first have to know what they're doing before we try to duplicate it. We know maybe that this craft flies in the air, so we want to see if we can do something like that. Yeah, but for when example, it comes to lesser know, inventions, it, we have to first use the technology and see it in action before we could say, now let's see what we could do. Right. But for example, you know, go, go to Roswell or go to some other crash retrieval or Kingman, uh, which I think is, is potentially a very good one, or even Aztec, which I think has been had a very good case made for it recently. Stop, but stop, I, stop, is, Aztec. Before we go on with that, I really want to segue into Aztec because I'm kind of a skeptic. And I know Scott Ramsey. I like the guy. I think he's really sincere. He really tried hard. I did read the book. I did study the people who didn't believe in that book and had their own ideas. But what makes you feel that Aztec is a compelling case before we even go on to King yeah. or something? Well, I think that uh, what he pointed out, I think very, very definitively, was that the, the primary attack on Aztec was made by a man who was beyond even having a grudge. Uh, it was a man who would wanted in on the investigation, was absolutely riveted by it, and was locked out uh, by Frank Scully, who wrote about it, and um, had a vendetta, and did everything possible to destroy the case publicly, and succeeded in that. So that's one thing. When you when you go back to the circumstantial evidence, I certainly will grant you that it's not anywhere as uh, pr uh, prolific or strong as with some other crash retrieval cases that I think are very good. Nonetheless, there's enough there that I think it's uh, way premature just to go back to this, this tired old debunking of the early 1950s that said, oh, it was all a hoax, and that the, uh, the guys involved were con men. Nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. I think Ramsey makes this a very, very persuasive case. So no, I, I don't agree. I think that the Aztec case is to, to debunk it the way that some people have done, I think that's old school, and I think it's wrong. All right, Kingman. We had the guy here <laughs> who has been studying Kingman for a long time, Kingman, Arizona. Yeah. What makes you think that has a possibility? Well, that's, a, that's another sketchy one. But uh, there's some, again, interesting circumstantial evidence pointing to Kingman. Um, you've got, uh, oh gosh, now I wish I could remember some of the some of the exact details of the case. I was just thinking about this recently too, but uh, you've got uh, some of the, re Kevin Randall did some work on Kingman. You've got um, where he came across a witness who seemed to talk about a crash in that area in, in the spring of 1953. A couple of other researchers also stumbled across people who talked about the same thing. Oh, and then you got this st very weird, interesting statement of Bill Uhouse, who's now dead who talked about the being that, uh, you know, who came, who was acquired in the spring of 1953. That was according to what you has used to say. So I just wonder, um, you know, when you get information like this, you can do one of two things. You can say, well, there's, it's not proven in any documents. So I'm just going to dismiss it and throw it out. Or you can say, well, this is interesting. And when you get enough of these from disparate sources, at least for myself, I think, hmm, it could be true. The, the thing that's really convinced me about crash retrievals, to be honest with you, is probably the work of Leonard Stringfield. Uh, you know, yeah. back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, through the early 90s, actually, Stringfield collected story after story after story, dozens, scores, uh, from individuals who very quietly would come up to him with fascinating stories either that they personally had or that their deceased uh, husband had told them about or what have you, about uh, being in a room with dead aliens at Wright Pat or being at a crash retrieval at this place or at that place, or in one of Stringfield's places, uh, cases of a, a doctor in New York City who had told him in some detail about having on one occasion done an autopsy on an alien being. 
And what Stringfield did is he simply collected them to the best of his ability. He tried to vet his sources and some were vetted better than others, but he had a lot of them and he became a kind of magnet for them. And I, I think when you look at the sum total of what he gathered, it's quite compelling. Whatever happened to all his files, I wonder? I don't know. Um, he died in 94. That's a great question. This is one of the big problems in our field. You've got these private researchers who develop a lot of information. And then what happens? It just goes away. I've been trying to get access to the APRO files. For, I've been working on this for five years. These people I wanted to ask you about won't, that. won't yeah, return my is, calls. I, I know where they are, show. basically. Are they in Sedona? Uh, the, the people are. But the, I don't think the files are. I think they're down in, uh, in the Phoenix area. Well, I'm not far from the Phoenix area, so maybe you and I can do a nighttime excursion. Risking and entering, I, I'd say. Well, you, you say know, very late st- at night, but then Sheriff Joe, who is, of course, the sheriff of Maricopa County, which covers Phoenix, he'll be listening to this show and he gets his gendarmes to follow us if we try to do a top secret trip to where those files are held. That's the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, folks that was headed by the late Jim and Coral Lorenzen starting in the 50s and 60s, going through probably the 80s and 90s. Richard Dolan, joining Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's The Coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I'd already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Time and time again. You need to come here and help us. We need assistance. Please. Those we should be able to depend on let us down. Federal and state and local officials saying help is on the way. Well, the folks here in Bell Harbor say show me. Don't depend on the government to save you. Take action now so that you're prepared for the next disaster with MyPatriotSupply.com. Get the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Call 866-229-0927. We are hurting down here, and we need help immediately. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs knows the importance of proper digestion. Make sure you take a look at the ultimate enzyme product. 
They're made with bile salts and fat digestion enzymes and protein digestive enzymes. And not only do the Ultimate Enzymes give you obvious benefits for digestion, but they can also help keep your blood flowing through your circulatory system. As most of you probably know by now, thick, sludgy, clotting blood is a serious risk factor for heart disease and stroke. Clearly, inappropriate and excessive blood clotting is a major health issue, and thick, sludgy blood is not just about heart health either. Sludgy blood can compromise oxygenation and nutrient delivery to all your cells and tissues and organs and ultimately lead to almost any health issue you can name. Concerned about proper digestion and heart health? Order Ultimate Enzymes by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast With Gene and Chris and the PowerCast, no, we're not planning on locating the APRO files. Not doing a heist? No heists. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they owe me a big favor. I really went out of the way to help them out with a, with a project and uh, under, with the understanding that uh, quid pro quo, you guys are going to you know, g- give me access to, to pull out some very specific uh, case files. And... Uh, and they, they just totally just, they, they now ignore me. I should go camp on their doorstep and say, I'm not going to leave until you make good on your promise. I'm sorry, I found Tina Choate. I was looking for her. She was one of the, she was really the main person who stole those files. And for anyone who has no idea what we're talking about, APRO had an enormous number of valuable firsthand UFO related files that they collected for over 30 years. 15 and, file cabinets. Yeah, it's huge. And, um, when the Lorenzans died in the mid eighties, this woman named Tina Choate and her, uh, her pal, Brian Myers, I believe right. strolled into town after they had hoodwinked Jay Allen Hynek to, to come to uh, Arizona with them um, under very false pretenses. And they go to APRO. I talked to Bob Dean about this. Bob Dean was on the APRO board at the time. And he said it was the most shameful thing in my entire life where I was part of the board that gave away those files to these people. And, and he, he hates them to this day. Uh, but really they had this pretense that they were starting a new UFO organization. Uh, they were going to make the files open to the public. They were going to, you know, they were going full guns on this. And then they, they got the files for nothing and then proceeded just to lock them up. And, um, right. And, no and since to... then, they've been they've been busted for uh, fraud and other questionable activities uh, that uh, do not shed a good light on their character. And every couple of months, I call them up and say, "Hey, remember me? I'm going to keep bugging you until you uh, until you get get in touch with me." The real real song and dance, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, I called her one numbers. time. I I actually gave her a phone call and uh, just trying to do some kind of interview talk with her and she wouldn't she wouldn't even say that it was her let me ask you here why would you lock these things up in a file cabinet and just leave them are they hoping that maybe somebody will come in there and write them a check for a million dollars to take no obviously the the reason they did is because they were they were told to the app profiles are so valuable and and for the ufo research to move forward we need access to files like those and you take it and you lock them away and you just kill the field you just put a big roadblock in front. Uh, you know, how, they're not going to get a million dollars for the files. They, maybe a couple of thousand dollars. Nothing you're going to retire off of. So it's not for money. It's, it's not even for spite. It's an op. It's an operate. What else can it be? They go in, they steal the files, and then they lock them away. What does that sound like? If you're dealing with a topic that's got national security implications, and this does, then what's, how difficult is it? To hire a couple of people and say, hey, do this. Just take this. Here you go. And um, everything's done through cutouts, and they're a cutout. That's what I would say. And, of course, it's not that you can sue them because you have no standing. Correct. They got the files legally. Yeah, well, yeah, possession is nine-tenths of the law, and they were awarded those files under, under uh, like you said, questionable <laughs> circumstances, but they were given the files by the board. Absolutely. They, they, could, they could be flooded. They could be destroyed. Who, who knows? I have no idea. So we only hope they might be somewhere. 
they can be getting, getting mold. Well, and they're in Southwest, maybe not much mold, but still we have no idea what's happened to them. You know, yeah. I could be sitting here a 15 minute drive from that place. Oh, well, Chris, there's a bunch of questions from our listeners and I can see now that this is one of the shows that should take six hours and then some, but since we can't do a six hour show today, Chris, do we have some questions from the audience that might be relevant to what we've been discussing so far? Yeah, we do, actually, Gene. And, uh, of course, Richard, you do uh, tend to bring out uh, very, very interesting questions from our listeners and Good. posters at forum.theparacast.com. Blowfish, one of our very active members, uh, has an interesting question here. I think it's a good one to start with. It's a topic that we haven't covered, but uh, we've kind of hinted around at it. What is your best evidence that a black budget space program exists uh, if, let's say, you get into a debate with skeptics about this? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I, I would make the argument by inference. So you have a couple of things going on. One is there's, there's is a black budget. Okay. We know that there's a black budget. Officially speaking, it's something along the lines of $50 billion. I guarantee you it's more than that. Um, and I would say that because what we have is a, an underground black budget economy that deals with narco trafficking, securities, fraud, financial fraud, and the like. And anyone who does any little investigation in, into the global intelligence community understands this. Two, space is the paramount center of gravity, as it were, for U.S. national security. If you do not control space, you're not a player. You do not win wars if you do not control space. So the United States has an absolute military paramount interest in dominating space as a platform. So you've got that. So you've got a black budget. You've got the need to control space, you therefore must have classified space-based programs that do exist. Okay. So that I think is very easy logic for anyone to understand. On top of that, you have a, a lot of video evidence of anomalies. And I'm not talking about the tether incident because I don't credit that one, but I do think that there are a number of compelling space-based UFO encounters that have come down to us that I do credit. So this is my logic. You have a lot of money, you have a demand for control of space, and you have encounters with what appear to be highly advanced technology in space. So let me ask you this. If you've got the wherewithal to be in space, are you simply going to um, not investigate any of the things that are out there? Of course you will. Of course you will, but you cannot investigate them in open. You cannot investigate them with the public watching you. That, that, that won't work. So you must have a clandestine space program to some extent. The question is, what is the extent? Are they simply dealing with classified technology that's dealing with this anomalous phenomenon in space in Earth orbit? Or is there the possibility that this program is dealing even with beyond Earth orbit, for example, the moon? I think the answer to that is yes. And I think the answer is yes, based on, again, the accounts that have come down to us over the years that deal with anomalies concerning the moon. So if you've got all of that, you're going to be investigated. You'd be irresponsible if you didn't. So I think on that reason, I think there's a secret space program. What are the exact parameters and contours of it? I don't know. I'm not in the program. They haven't really bothered to tell me. Um, but that's how I think it's going down. That's why I believe it. Okay, the belief, how does that transfer to actually proving it? Is well, there a way a to whole, prove a secret uh, space program? I can't, I, no, I don't know yet. Uh, I haven't proven it. I think that it's, when, when I look at this topic, there, I have to make gradations. Gradation number one is what I know is true. What I know is true is based on confirmed documentary evidence and other things that stand up. So declassified documents and so forth. And what I know from those is that there is a phenomenon that has engaged our national security community for many, many years that deals with technology that's not supposed to exist, but does, that violates sensitive airspace, objects that don't look normal, they look disc-shaped, they have incredible capabilities and so forth. That, to me, there's no question. That's real. That begs the question of who they are. So that's gradation number one. The next level is what I feel confident is probably true. And then there's another gradation of things that I, I speculate 
and I think are interesting and may be true and other things that are just BS. I put the secret space program in the second level. So I think that there are enough compelling data bits, data points that have come to me over the years that convince me, that persuade me that this is the case. That's where I put that. But proving it? No, I mean, not yet. Um, Now, maybe in the next decade, maybe in the next two decades, things may change. And the reason they may change is that we're now in an era where it seems to be becoming easier for entities other than just the U.S. government and NASA to get out into space. We're talking not just other countries, but we're talking private entities as well. And if that trend continues, it's quite possible that uh, we'll get other data points that are much more compelling. Yeah, Um, we have to think of all the people right now who are doing that, like one of the co-founders of PayPal, the place where, you know, you send money and everything. He's got a company that's sending craft into space and maybe, hmm, maybe that's where our next real trip, public trip, as opposed to any private or secret trip, our public trip to the moon and elsewhere (laughs) may come from. Richard Dolan discussing the national security state UFOs and more with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Let us continue with Richard Dolan, author of the two-part series out of three UFOs in the National Security State, a third book, Promise for 2014. Well, I'll work on it in 2014. If it's done that year, I'll be, I'll, be a, I'll be a happy guy. It's one of those projects like Chris's book, Stalking the Herd, where you start tackling the project, you realize to do it justice, it just takes a lot more work. That's putting it very well. Um, you know, for years, I've had the bulk of my research in Volume 3 done. It's, um, so it's not really a matter of gathering the data. I, I have to do some research on the last five, six years, but that, that's not going to be too hard. I know where I'm going to get all of that. It's just a matter of, of putting it all together, organizing it. Because, you know, as, as Chris knows, he's written books. To do a book right, 
really it's two different things. You have to get your data. And that's, that's a hard thing right there. You got to do your research. You got to get all your stuff together. But then the other thing is you have to organize it and right. tell the story in a way that's actually going to make sense and be engaging. And, and when, it, with my topic, I mean, I'm dealing with the last 20, 25 years now of, of UFO history. I mean, just think about how much that is. I'm yeah. going to try to cram it all into 600 pages. It's huge. And uh, right. So breaking it all down, to, weeding out, deciding what goes in, what doesn't go in. How do I, what's the right proportion for this story and for that theme and so forth. And I actually, I enjoy that. Uh, aspect of writing a book, but it's, man, it's a lot of work. Does it seem to you as if there's going to have to be a fourth volume to make it work? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope not. Uh, yeah, really? At least what I want to do is, uh, I mean, I, I think for, if I go from 92 to the present, that's a little more than 20 years. That's roughly the same span of time as my first two books. And I should be able to handle it in 600 pages or so. Now, there will be a world beyond that as we lurch toward our dystopian nightmare of a future. And uh, maybe in another 20 years, if I'm still kicking, I'll, I'll kick out the fourth volume. Uh -huh. But not this time. Chris, any more questions? Ton of questions. Uh, Techno Mage T has a good one. He's one of our newer posters at forum.theparacast.com. Firstly, thanks you for coming on the Paracast. And he, this is a pretty interesting question. Given the long history of lying, deception, and abuse of power by members of the U.S. government, and he gives the examples of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, the Tuskegee experiments, MKUltra, etc., mm -hmm. and the government's willingness to use whatever means to achieve their ends, what methods do you use to distinguish between government insiders providing you with real information <laughs> as opposed to disinformation agents who are trying to possibly work psyops on you or, or dissuade you from going down a particular path? Yeah, great question. That's, that's a stellar question. And uh, the short answer is there's no sure way to know. Uh, the longer answer, I guess, is, you know, you do your research the way anyone would, would do their research, which is you, you go for corroboration, you go for, you know, you have a skeleton of, of known facts, let's just say, like a body. And it's like an architecture of knowledge, as I sometimes think of it. And so if I get a data point from someone that doesn't fit, that's like way out there. I have to wonder about it. I think, does this make sense or does this not make sense? Um, if I get another data point that says the same thing, or then a third and then a fourth, then, then I'm at the point where I think, let's take a look at this and see, is this legit or not? My basic mode in this field, despite the fact that I'm very happy to speculate, despite the fact that I, I don't mind giving my opinions, my basic mode is one of caution and conservatism, that is, I, I try to be as factually based in uh, telling my histories as I can be, given that, that any work of history, every work of history is provisional and is subject by subsequent generations to be reinterpreted and corrected. And that, that had better be true with my book. I, I certainly hope that people you know, in the future, don't just say, oh, Dolan's book is the, that's the word on UFOs. I mean, my God, it can't be. So there have to be other researchers coming along, correcting what I've done and then researchers after them. And, uh, all, all I can say is you do your best. You use your training to the best of your ability. It's like any lawyer, like any investigator, you do your best. And that's really, that's really all that I can say. Um, I thought that that question was going to be, given the government's propensity for lying, what makes me think that there'll one day ever be openness on UFOs, that the government will ever tell the truth, uh, considering that I, I co-authored a book dealing with government disclosure on UFOs. That's what I was expecting. And to that, I'll simply say, of course the government won't tell the truth on UFOs. Even if they're pressed to the wall, they're not going to tell the truth on UFOs. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about disclosure, if we can use that word, is not that it's going to force the truth out on UFOs. It's that it will make this topic fair game for public inquiry and it'll give Less us toxic. an opportunity. Right. It'll give us an opportunity globally for other smart people to dive in and, and come up with some investigative journalism. And so that's the difference that disclosure will make. That also dovetails uh, into the realm of other countries uh, gaining more and more of a foothold into space and private enterprise. Who knows what the Chinese might find going to the moon? for instance, right. and that would exactly. put them in a position of power 
they could possibly find something uh, worthy of disclosure that then they could use uh, as a bargaining chip or some sort of leverage over the U.S. government. Yeah, I wonder so about this. It's getting it's getting more and more um, interesting and complicated, I think, as as we see more and more entities going out into space. Now, you mentioned the word disclosure. We have a couple of questions that that are kind of uh, interesting in that um, you you seem to be willing to uh, go on shows and um, and talk about your work in venues that uh, some of the rank and file, some of the more heavy hitters in the field and, uh, are a little bit, uh, a little bit nervous about, for instance, uh, Dave M says, uh, do you think that you're taken less seriously if you associate yourself with Stephen Bassett? Another question is the trained observer says he, he thinks you took a larger hit to your credibility by associating yourself with project Camelot and Carrie Cassidy. Oh, for God's sake. And your please, recent uh, please, little foray please, on uh, please, the please. twins that shall not be named. Uh, where do you come down? Uh, how do you the twins that where shall do you draw wait, the line? The Let's put twins? it that way. The twins that shall not be named. I don't know even know who those are. The twins that shall not be named. Well, we don't we don't like to give them any sort of uh, Blake Cousins and his his uh, brother. Oh, that one. I the was just twins thinking. who shall not be named. Yes. I, okay. Yeah. Well, that that one I can just say uh, that was my own my own ignorance and stupidity yes it's true um i have gaps in my knowledge i get i get radio interview requests all the time all the time all the time all the time and most of the people who contact me i don't know who the hell they are i I, honestly i can't keep up i'm working in my own little private idaho i've got my own things going on so i get an interview request and i i actually will plead ignorance i literally did not know blake cousins was you can laugh at me all you want i'll take laughter (laughs) I'll deserve it, but we'll laugh with you, Rich. I didn't know who he was. So I, I do this interview. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing about that is like, I'm, I'm doing this interview. And it was the most bizarre, whacked out, hit it with the dumbest questions, the dumbest, stupid <laughs> questions. And I just said, well, who is this guy? And I got so angry. I got so angry as a result of that. And then the guy who set it up, he, um, uh, the, the kid, he apologized. Like, I, I said, how do you not know the reputation? Anyway, so that's, that's the Blake Cousins things, and I'll, I'll take the blame for that. Fine, whatever. I don't really care. Um, Steve Bassett. I'll talk about Stephen Bassett. Listen, I've known Stephen for many years now, 12, 13 years, whatever. And uh, he catches so much hell. I understand. But I like Stephen personally. I'll always like him personally and assume me whatever uh the x conferences are i i i got on steven's case years ago when yeah, we he, talked he, about this well the, the the thing i got on steven's case about was is at the time his promotion of alfred weber right and i, I was i you know, I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. I'll talk with you guys. Not publicly, but you and I did talk about this a little bit when we saw each other last. We've got to do a break, Richard. So I want to maybe hold this for the next segment. How's that? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. This is fascinating. More of this discussion continuing. Things you never heard before, things he hasn't mentioned in public before, and maybe he'll rue the day after this. Richard Dolan joining Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. What looks good under your Christmas tree and tastes even better? Big Berkey water filters. Yes, the gift of clean water. A gift that provides a great foundation for achieving good health in the lives of your loved ones. A Big Berkey water filter gives them protection from bacteria, heavy metals, chlorine, fluoride, pesticides and herbicides, VOCs and more. And best of all, a Big Berkey water filter is a gift that lasts for many years with no additional investment. And that saves time and money in filter replacements that other water filters require and are even powerful enough to purify treated, untreated, or even stagnant pond water. As always, all orders over $50 are shipped free, and GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Order online at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com, spelled Big, B-E-R-K-E-Y, WaterFilters.com, or call 877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-B-E-R-K-E-Y. Gift well this Christmas. Give a Big Berkey water filter. These days, so many suffer from heartburn, stomach ulcers, and acid reflux. And most never realize it is the high acidity within the body that causes their discomfort. While selective diet choices can help, AlkaVision Plasma pH drops can really make a change. A few drops added to water can optimize your body's pH level, ridding you of harmful waste and acid, promoting health, and restoring vibrance and energy. Healthy pH levels make all the difference. High acidity can also cause depression, insomnia, and irritability. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops bring you vital balance that can be truly life-changing. Alkalizing boosts immune response, reduces headaches and cramping, and even helps prevent bone loss. This is simple science that helps your body do what's natural. Order your AlkaVision pH Drops for just $29.95 at AlkaVision.com, A-L-K-A-Vision.com, or call 800-518-7615. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So polished he does that. Is that good? Was that good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I think it's... Between you and Nick, Nick, because he's so bizarre, but you, you sound like a real broadcaster when you do it. Oh, sweet. Well, I have a nice microphone here, a little windscreen. I got the whole thing going on. Uh, what kind of mic do you have? That's a Yeti. Oh, that's, that's what Chris is using. Yeah. yeah, I love this, man. This is yeah, great. that's a great mic. It's the best. I'm using the Yeti Pro because I can run it through an analog mixer. All right. Richard Dolan joining us with his Yeti. It's the appropriate mic to use on a paranormal radio show. Exactly. There can be no others from a company called Blue Mike. <laughs> they did not buy advertising here, but they should. <laughs> you were going to tell us here, we were getting into your interactions with Stephen Bassett yeah, and some yeah. of the side issues. Let's hear what you never told before in public. Well, look, all I'll just say is um, Stephen is the ultimate, what we call big tent ufology guy. He really is. And he has his perspective on how to move this field forward. There are certain things that he does that I do agree with. Other things he's said over the years that I don't agree with. One of them is in his ex-conferences, which overall, I'm giving this man credit for organizing, I think he did six or seven ex-conferences, six of them at least. And by the way, I'm the only person who was an invited speaker to every one of those ex-conferences. I'm, right. I think that's, I'm proud of that actually. And, and I think all of them had something to offer. 
uh, and the idea that he had of, of going to the National Press Club in the aftermath of those ex-conferences, I also think was a laudable idea. And, you know, we can look back on it and think, well, that's just tiresome, you know, every single year. But, you know, think about initiating this and trying to make a mainstream breakthrough. And it, no, it didn't happen. But I, I, I think it's uh, a totally worthy idea. But, but the thing with, uh, with, with Alfred Weber, I'll just say, yeah, he, in one of the early ones, I think in 04, 05 or 06, whenever, he gave um, Alfred a Lifetime Achievement Award. And I, I said to him privately, you know, don't, you're doing a wrong thing here. Do not encourage this man, because really all that he is is a lightning rod to make this field look like, like a bunch of fools. Um, every time we did the press conference when Alfred was there, the Washington Post only wanted to talk to him. Why? Because he sounded, he sounded crazy. That's why. But Stephen had this idea that Alfred initiated the idea of exopolitics. It's kind of a sexy word. And he wanted to have that kind of as the new thing. He didn't like ufology. Okay, whatever. And I really feel, honestly, that he was not fully conversant with Alfred's ideas. I think he thought it was a great title. He said, let's bring him in. And it just turned out not to be a good idea. But no, I don't think that I lose credibility by associating with Stephen Bassett. No. If someone wants to think that, they can think what they want. Now, the whole thing with Camelot, uh, this makes me laugh. And we've talked about this on, on this show in the past, by the way, and I'll just deal with it again. People love Camelot. They hate Camelot. Whatever. Do I care? No, I don't care. Here's why. Because when I did two Camelot conferences, all right, that put me in a completely new audience. And by the way, the YouTube videos that I have with Camelot have more views than almost anything else I've ever done. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right. opening up a huge uh, potential right. so market. If someone doesn't like it, screw them. I really don't care if someone likes it or doesn't. I made the decision very consciously, and I'll make it again. What I try to do is I say my piece. I don't change what I say, right. uh, depending on where I'm at. I absolutely don't do that. I will modify what I say to speak to a particular audience that I think is going to be listening because what I'm trying to do at all times and this, whenever I do anything publicly, I try to be mindful of who I'm speaking to and what I can do to turn on as many light bulbs over people's heads as I can. So to do that, I can't just burrow myself away into my own little cave and speak only to those people that I think are the most credible or that will make me, you know, feel more comfortable that I agree with these people. It's nonsense. It's a big world out there. We don't all agree. And by the way, my ideas have continued to evolve in this field. And that doesn't mean that I, I'm all Mr. New Age. In fact, I have a real serious problem with a lot of New Age infiltration in our field. But it's there. I'm not going to engage these people if I just run away from every opportunity from dealing with them. So no, I'm not going to apologize for that at all. I think what these critics need to understand is that it's a big world out there. It's like politics, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows of, of, us, of us. And that's just how it is. Um, I'm not in a position where I feel like I'm just going to um, only associate with those people that have my highest level of respect. I want to go out there and get my hands dirty and talk to um, a lot of people because there's a lot of work to be done. Well, and you're also a businessman running a publishing company, too. So there are some commercial concerns as well, which you, we need to obviously uh, uh, acknowledge. Uh, well, as far as, as far as that, no. I mean, what I would say is um, I will not publish a book that I think is, is not of a standard that I consider to be like a high, a, a valuable book. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I understand that. But what and, I was getting uh, at is, I, is I you're opening down. up new markets, a new, uh, a new uh, section of, the, of an yeah. audience. Yeah. I mean, look, if, if everyone agreed with me about how the world is, gee, that would be wonderful for me, but that's, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so I have to go out there and talk to yes. people who don't agree with me and don't look at the world the way I do. And I'm not going to run away from that. I'll, I, will, I will do them. I'll show them enough respect to speak to them and to disagree with them and to offer my own point of view. You know, when I gave my, my talks at Camelot and I did a couple of other, even more out there, truly new agey love fests that I was invited well, to. You and I were involved I, in one, uh, the UFO con thing. Oh, we could talk with Doug Dietrich. <laughs> I would be very happy to chat about that too, by the way. But when you go into these environments, I think it's important 
for people like ourselves to challenge those people in the audience and to challenge those people listening with a different perspective that they're not used to. I do that. And I know you do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was getting up there preaching to the assembled masses and the new religion of the 21st century. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking about your, your points of view and, and your particular take on things, this is a good question from Jimmy H who's uh, one of our newer posters at form.theparacast.com. Mr. Dolan, I've been listening to a few of your podcasts, and I really appreciate that you are not afraid to go into deeper and rather complex philosophical discussions about the nature of reality and the power structures of society. Which thinkers and writers inspired your own ideas about a breakaway society? And have you ever tried to publish your ideas, philosophical or academic, uh, in those um, academic type publications? And have you discussed these ideas with uh, academics, people possibly outside of the field? So he's talking specifically about the breakaway civilization idea or um, trying to get an idea of what the exact question is here. Well, yeah. In other words, he, he wants to know who's in, who inspired you to really go in that direction, which uh, we really haven't. We've kind of touched on it here um, today, but but um, I think he wants yeah. to know where that particular point of view really originated and who inspired that or who um, kind of sparked your interest in this whole idea. Yeah, um, well, I can I can tell him when the idea really germinated with me, and it was really through 07, 08, and 09, um, during the home stretch when I was completing the second volume of UFOs in the national security state, and it, it evolved. I'll tell you what about evolution, though. We have to evolve into this announcement first. It's an announcement. <laughs> That's the worst segue I've ever done. Richard Dolan <laughs> joining Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats, I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. To thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. 
Visit the Berkey Guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey Guy. Hi, my name is Annette, and due to menopause symptoms for nearly two years, I suffered severe hot flashes, which prevented me from sleeping all night. It was so hard to work because it continued all day to have the hot flashes from hell. I was exhausted and depleted. After only three weeks on One World Way, I have no hot flashes, and I'm sleeping normally again. I feel energized and strong. This is an amazing product. It is a little-known fact that every single cell of your body is supposed to produce 10% of its protein content as glutathione. But due to toxicity and aging, it does not. Could glutathione be a missing factor in optimal cell function for your entire body? If you restore the optimal glutathione levels in your cells, especially your glands and organs, then as a result, your glands and organs work better. Imagine the quality of life improvement you might have. To order One World Way, call 888-988-3325. That's 888 888- 988-3325 or visit oneworldway.com that's oneworld w-h-e-y.com hi this is nuclear physicist lecturer stanton friedman you are listening to the paracast the gold standard of paranormal radio by the way richard dolan has this new company called richard dolan press and he's yeah. going to be bringing out some fascinating titles. But we posed a question to you, Chris did. Yeah. That you were in the process of beginning to answer, and now's your chance to finish. Yeah. So the idea of a breakaway civilization, I guess um, there, I can say that there was no one source or inspiration that prompted me to think of it. Um, that I can say, because I, I, I just don't recall that there was any. Um, well, Joe Farrell has has mentioned this uh, in in several of his books, uh, which came out around that same time period. Well, he, he followed on what I was doing, actually. Um, I yeah. mean, I know that. I mean, that's the phrase that I coined. I remember coining it, and I I posited the idea in one of the chapters of my second volume of, of UFOs in the national security state. It's at the very beginning of chapter nine, actually, where I really started talking about it. And no, it was something that actually I will say came to me when I was trying to understand what I call the structure of power, who's in charge, how does it all work? What is the likely result of decades and generations of clandestine study of, of exotic technology? My, my feeling, and this is only my theory, um, based on what I, I think has happened, which is that if you have ever recovered any crash, retri- uh, crash UFO technology, if any of it has been recovered, it is therefore being studied in secret. It is therefore subject to very severe kind of secrecy protocols. And the nature of, of scientific development being what it is, I, this is how I see it. Actually, there's one intellectual inspiration for breakaway civilization. Actually, and In fact, this is what I was reading at the time. Uh, this is a long deceased historian named Arnold J. Toynbee who wrote um, a long extended series of, of uh, volumes on called a study of civilization. I happen to have a condensed volume of Toynbee's study on my shelf and I actually read a lot of it. It's kind of tough going, but really what he did is he got me thinking about what is a civilization, what constitutes a civilization. And I can tell you that in 08 and 09, this is a very, big thought that was in my head. What is it that constitutes a civilization? When, when I looked over at the history of the Cold War, one thing that came through to me was that you had separate scientific infrastructures. So you had the Soviet scientific infrastructure where they were actually doing totally different science. Some of it was spurious nonsense science, like uh, Trofim Lysenko, who had all of these nonsensical theories of biology. It was a completely different infrastructure from what was going on in the West. So you had these two. So in theory, our, our history shows us that we actually can have separate scientific infrastructures kind of coexisting. And, and it then came to me that, that really what the classified world probably has is its own separate scientific infrastructure. Why is that so impossible? We have this idea that it is impossible, but I don't believe it. I think that, you know, some, I think it's highly probable. Yeah. I think some technologies can be segued and into money-making opportunities. You know, you, improve on your integrated circuits or fiber optics or what have you, but some, some breakthroughs are too valuable 
to share with the rest of the world. So if you have a breakthrough that deals with propulsion, if you have a breakthrough that deals with energy, that doesn't get shared with the world. That's too transformative, too revolutionary. And you continue studying it on your own and you classify the patents, you classify the knowledge so that it literally becomes illegal for the outside world to study it. You see, what that means is for the rest of the world, their future is being held hostage. But for the, the guys who are in with the in crowd in the black budget world, they can continue to work off of their knowledge and make their own developments and kind of jump way, way, way ahead of the rest of us. Because that's how scientific demands, like you make one breakthrough that can lead to another, that can lead to another still and so on. But if we're prevented from that, then we're stuck spinning our wheels essentially or going much more slowly while those who have fundamentally different um, understandings of science and reality, they can way, go far. And huge budgets. I, I asked myself one day, does this constitute a separate civilization? Can it? With, with different levels of technology, different cosmology that would allow them to may, have understandings of the world that the rest of us poor slobs can't have because we don't have the opportunity. And I think in a sense that can qualify them as a civilization that is broken away from our own, a separate civilization. I wanted to ask you here as we get to this kind of subject here. All right, so maybe we have a secret government in the U.S., but what about the rest of the world? Are there organizations or portions of governments around the world working behind the scenes to enforce the secrecy? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, what we have is a global system that's in place. Um, do we think that, I don't know, France is any different than the United States and how the government is essentially managed from a national security perspective? point of view or Britain or Germany or uh, Russia for that matter, or Australia or China. Uh, now China may be a little bit of a wild card, but I, I don't think it's any fundamentally different or India. What you have are systems in place where powerful interests decide a, who's going to rule by and large, B what the primary national security policies are going to be. They control, they, they have as much control over their classified doings as what you see in the United States, by and large. And so where does that control come from? Are they all separate competing little intelligence communities? No, I don't think so at all. What we have is a global system that's developing. I don't think it's, it's fully developed, it's fully formed, but it's clearly in the process of being developed. So this is why I keep coming back to it. We have to understand what is the true structure of power here on planet Earth. It's not a sy system of these separate countries, sovereign nations, um, duking it out like, you know, in the pre-World War I era, I suppose. Um, it's different now. It, it's, there's a global financial system of control that is the true power behind almost any government that I can think of. And all I can do is, again, I infer that based on the limited number of studies that we have of black budget America, that that has become privatized. You know, most, uh, the, the few actually detailed public studies we have of, of the black budget America have come to this conclusion that it's essentially become more privatized than anything else. The real power, in other words, not, it's not DOD, but rather private money that is behind it, particularly in the special access programs that is black budget programs. And uh, if that is so, then that again points to the fact that we have private money it really rules today. So what do they do? Here's the system. They, they uh, get their hooks into a U.S. black budget uh, program that they get to run without public oversight. They get to use the U.S. military as their personal police force. That's a nice thing to have. And they get to do their research basically for free on public tax dollars and whatever, whatever other financial dealings that they're able to manage uh, with no oversight and total security. And that, that, I think, is the structure of how UFO secrecy is probably being done. You've got programs that are beyond the normal purview of an American president or U.S. Congress or anything like that. U.S. president can't possibly have oversight of these. Just, I mean, think, think about this. You have hundreds and probably maybe thousands of these black budget programs. It is literally an impossibility for a president to be on top of them all. And it's also unwise. He's got to have, he has to be able to have deniability of things that are happening that are sensitive. And all it would be is a distraction if he can't do anything about it anyway. 
again, he's got to meet with the dignitaries. He's got to be the public face. It's not his job to manage the massive illegal labyrinthian Byzantine structure of the U.S. black budget system. That's for other people to manage. That's not for him to manage. Especially since a lot of it is, is like you said, held in the private sector. There really is no ability to over, oversee that because it uh, exists within a, it's within a private uh, corporate exactly. you know, realm. Exactly. It's proprietary. proprietary. And this is That's not, the word I was looking for. Very, very good. And this is not simply well, you know, a UFO Now thing, that we've brought this up, this leads us to another question uh, from Jimmy H. And... Um, or actually, no, this one is from Technomage T. So are we live? I mean, I, are we pre, I, I don't know how this works. Are we live or pre-record? Well, I'm, I'm just reading questions from the forum that have been, you know, when we announced your show, then boom. People oh, these are pre oh, questions. Wow. Real cool. Okay. Yeah. And before Chris reads that question, we'll hold it off to our final segment. Richard Dolan joins Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, taxhelponline.com. That's taxhelponline.com. We travel so much, and having a fake TV, well, it gives added peace of mind. Burglars look for houses that appear to be easy targets, but fake TV can fool even professional burglars into thinking someone is home watching television. As a recent widow living alone, it gives me great peace of mind to set my fake TV near a window and know that passing motorists and pedestrians will think someone is home watching TV when I'm actually away from home. Fake TV easily plugs into any outlet, just like a light on a timer. And they're so easy to use, you just plug them in and they're ready to go. Plus, they're so affordable that we have one upstairs and downstairs. Fake TV is only $29.95 with free shipping. Order your fake TV by calling 877-5-FAKE-TV or go to faketv.com. That's 877-532-5388 or faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. Hi, my name is Scott Fuchs, teacher and rowing coach for over 14 years. I was sluggish, overweight, on prescription drugs, and only 30-something. Fortunately, I was referred to Dr. Z, and happy to say Dr. Z's all-natural protocols over a consistent course resolved my health issues. I'm in the best shape of my life, and most importantly, on zero medications. I'm Dr. Zdanowski, author of Evology, trained as a primary care physician, surgical manipulation under anesthesia, 
Expert in nutrition, diet, weight loss, immune system, and I specialize in chiropractic. My 15 years of professional experience has taught me the four keys to vibrant health, a balanced muscular skeletal system, an integrated nervous system, a flowing lymphatic system, and a body filled with over 90 essential nutrients. This has been a secret too long. Actualize your potential, reverse disease. Call me, Dr. Z. 201-945-1177, 201-945-1177, evolveyourself.com. Hello, this is Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. With Gene and Chris on the PowerCast, Richard Dolan joins us for this final segment. I can't believe it's the final segment. I'm looking at the watch. I'm looking at the segments. Okay, we may have time for one or two more questions here. Chris, you were about to pose one. Yeah, this kind of uh, ties in with what uh, Richard was just talking about. And how would you break down, I- I'm going to paraphrase Tech Umage T's question a little bit here, but basically what he's asking is what are the most effective means used by governments to quell dissent and discussion of these forbidden topics? Is it intelligence agency collusion and control of the media? Is it you know whitewash sort of PR uh, operations like Project Blue Book? How do you break that apart and where do you see the most effective use of, of this power? Well, I think you hit on it. Media control is is paramount. Media and academic control are absolutely critical. And when you go back through the history, starting with the 1940s, this is really when our world truly became fundamentally transformed as a result of the Second World War. Relation, important relationships were cemented between the CIA, U.S. intelligence community, and the major sources of media. New York Times, Washington Post, Reuters and the wire services and CBS News and all of that. And we know this is true. This is not open for speculation or debate. We uh, forget UFOs. We know that this is true, that the CIA had intimate, ongoing relationships with all, all, all of the U.S. major uh, media sources and not just U.S., but globally. Now, does that mean that the CIA controlled all news. No, of course it didn't. Um, When you look at the history of UFO reporting over the years, what you find is that local newspapers, particularly in the past, were actually much more likely to report about UFO events than the majors, than the the Times and the Post and so forth. Uh, And any time that the New York Times did touch on the topic, it was, it has always been, to this day, it's always been an absolute dismissal. Um, And this is not by accident. If you are trying to manage public opinion, it's okay, actually, to let the little people in on the fringes talk about anything they want. That's like a safety valve. But what you must not ever do is allow your official sources of truth, like the New York Times, for example. They must never, ever give this credence, and they never have. It's the same with the academic community. How hard do you really think it is? to manage the academic community, easier than you think. We tend to think of the ivory tower as a bastion of intellectual freedom and professors have tenure and they can do what they want. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Um, What you have is, just like within the media, if you have a few well-placed people in the academic world who are doing your work, and this happens, this is the case, they're like the sheep dogs that keep the sheep in place. So, you know, back in the 1950s and 60s, one of the key guys in that regard was Donald Menzel, Harvard astronomer, who was the world's leading debunker on UFOs and who we learned years after his death had a very, very prominent and intimate relationship with the NSA, where not even his wife knew about this. He was he was not just an astronomer. Turns out he was a leading cryptologist and um, had great skills in that area. And anyone who would promote UFOs in the academic world had to fear the wrath of Donald Menzel. Who's going to mug a Harvard astronomer in some academic journal? Answer, basically no one. And one guy who tried to fight back, James McDonald, who was easily Menzel's match and more, ended up having a tragic end to his life 
uh, in his early 50s. Uh, you really think that was caused by speaking up out of turn? Well, it, it certainly ruined his life. You know, when, when McDonald took on UFO secrecy, it, it destroyed his life. Um, he was subject to character assassination again and again by people like Philip Klass. Uh, we know this. And it really hurt McDonald professionally in his career. You know, shortly before he died, he, he was in Congress doing uh, hearings on what was known as the SST, the supersonic transport, talking about, I think, environmental issues concerning with that because he was an atmospheric physicist. And he was humiliated uh, because uh, kind of a chuckle went uh, throughout the hearings about him being this UFO guy. And they were, again, really, it, it, it hurt him so much. Um, whether he died of an actual suicide or whether he was suicided, I, I don't know. And I don't really have a, a position. I think in the past, I, I believed he was probably bumped off and who knows. All I'm saying is that back to the whole academic control thing, it's very difficult to fight that entrenched system. You have some, you know, just imagine some community college professor wants to um, write a book about UFOs. Well, he'd have to worry about the big dogs going after him, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. And most people don't have the stomach for that kind of a fight. Um, I've talked to many academicians, both active and retired. And uh, the ones who are active are in mortal terror of this field. Mortal terror, because they know it's a career killer. The ones who retire, they don't care as much. And they're more willing to... um, come out and chat with me about it and all all of that. So I think there's a system of media control. I think there's a system of academic control and also scientific. Let's not forget this. Scientific community requires funding to do anything. And if this is a topic that is classified, guess what? There won't be public funding coming forth with it. So there's no public funding for the UFO phenomenon. I'm sure there's funding in the classified domain for that, but that doesn't come out. So if you control the media, by and large, if you control the academic community, again, by and large, and the scientific community, you've gone, that's the bulk of it right there. Then you can let, you can let the great masses talk about what they want on the history channel and on cable networks. It doesn't matter because that's all goofy entertainment. And then of course you get the Hollywood connection, which is real in which, um, you have CIA slash Hollywood connections, and we know this is case, the case now. We had um, a guy who is a real, was a real CIA officer, Chase Brandon, who came out about a year ago and said, point blank, he was the CIA's liaison to Hollywood, and he was the real thing. He wasn't making that up. So there are these relationships in place to manage public opinion. But here's the thing. They can only go so far. What's happened in the age of the web, the age of the Internet, is was the one unforeseen thing, which was that the global public still has a tremendous hunger for information on this because somehow, even though they don't have the education, they know there's something, there's something wrong with the reality as being presented to them. They sense it. They feel it in their bones. Maybe, maybe that's what it is, but there's a hunger for this. And I see it every day when I talk to a new person about this topic and I see the little light bulb going on over their head after they talk to me for five minutes. It's like they've gone through their life, not realizing that, wow, this is a fascinating topic. And so once people are exposed to this topic, they very frequently want to know more. And that's what, um, these controllers have to deal with. And, and they are very good at what they do. They, they're very good at spin. They're very good at entertainment. They're very good at distraction. They're very good at denial and dismissal and control over media, but it's not complete. And again, we're in a fluid situation where I think a lot of things can change in the next generation. And whether, whether it'll change toward more openness or not, I don't know, but I think it's all things are possible. You know what's possible right now? <laughs> Possible to ask Richard Dolan, where can we find more of the stuff that you do? Yeah, go to richarddolanpress.com. That's my main web presence. Um, it's a page I, I update it sporadically, furtively, and I haven't updated it in a little while, but it's going to be going through a lot of updates in the very near future. I would say um, it has a lot of things on, on me, on a lot of articles and, and books that I've written are there. Uh, also, it's got a place for other authors whose work I have been publishing. And you can read up on them. There's a lot of fascinating people in there. 
some people know me on Facebook. I'm very active on Facebook. I'm pretty much maxed out with my personal friends, but I have a public page. So I'm out there. I'm very easy to reach. But richarddolanpress.com is probably the best way. Of course, our own Chris O'Brien is finishing up Stalking the Herd for Adventures Unlimited Press. His site is ourstrangeplanet.com. Ourstrangeplanet.com. You can find us on Twitter. We're known as the Paracast. There are, in fact, two Paracast fan clubs on Facebook. We'll figure that out eventually. Or just check theparacast.com for everything that we do. Rich Dolan, thanks for joining us this week on the Paracast. It was a pleasure. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>